There is a forest in the United States with more biodiversity than most of the Amazon rainforest. Over 900 plant species, 340 wildflowers, 273 bird species, 500 butterfly species, one of the most biodiverse ecosystems in North America. Where is it? Texas. I bet you have never heard of it. Because it is dead, 97% dead. This happened in the last century. Your grandparents might have seen these forests before they disappeared. Let me show you what America destroyed and why nobody talks about it. The Lost World, the Texas Piney Woods, the Longleaf Pine Forests, 900 plant species, 340 wildflowers, 189 tree species, 273 birds, 116 fish, 54 reptiles, 31 amphibians, and over 500 butterflies and moths. When scientists measure biodiversity, the variety of life in an ecosystem, longleaf forests rank among the most biodiverse in North America. They have diversity levels comparable to tropical forests, right here in the American South. Originally, these forests covered 90 million acres, stretching from Virginia to Texas, an area larger than Montana and about the size of Germany. In Texas alone, there were millions of acres, 54,400 square miles. Four national forests stretched from the northeast corner down to the Gulf Coast, species found nowhere else on Earth. The Texas Trailing Phlox, a flower that only grows here. If these forests disappear, it is extinct forever. The Red Cockaded Woodpecker. It needs old longleaf trees to survive. It excavates cavities in living trees. The Gopher Tortoise. A keystone species whose burrows shelter hundreds of other species. Snakes, frogs, insects, mammals. An underground city for the forest floor. This ecosystem evolved over millions of years. Longleaf pines can live for centuries. Some old growth specimens could have been saplings when European colonists first arrived. These forests survived ice ages, climate shifts, fires, hurricanes, and floods. They survived everything nature threw at them. Then we showed up. So where is this incredibly biodiverse forest? Well, it's not there anymore. 97% of it is gone, destroyed, cut down, converted, from 90 million acres to less than 5 million acres remaining today. In Texas, the devastation was even worse. From millions of acres, only 45,000 acres of authentic longleaf forest remain. 45,000 out of millions. That's a loss of 97 to 99% depending on how you calculate it. Let me put that in perspective. Imagine if 97% of the Amazon rainforest was cut down in a single century. The world would lose its mind. There would be international outrage, sanctions, emergency summits. But when we did it to our own forests, silence. How did this happen? Simple. Lumber. Longleaf pine produces some of the best construction lumber in the United States. The wood is incredibly dense, strong, durable, resistant to rot, insects, and hurricanes. You know those historic homes in the South that are 200 years old and still standing? Many were built with longleaf pine. The floors in those old plantation houses, longleaf pine, still solid after centuries. Naval ships, bridges, railroad ties, construction beams. Longleaf pine was the foundation of American expansion. It was the perfect building material, and America was growing fast. In the 1900s, in Texas alone, they were cutting 750 million board feet of longleaf pine every single year. 750 million every year, just in Texas, for decades. To visualize that, if you lined up that much lumber end to end, it would circle the earth multiple times every single year. We cut these forests faster than they could regenerate, much, much faster. Because here's the problem with longleaf, it grows slow. A longleaf pine is incredibly slow growing, often taking many decades to reach full maturity. Some do not produce viable seeds for their first 30 years of life. And for the first two to three years of its life, sometimes longer in challenging conditions, it does not even look like a tree. It stays at ground level, looking like a clump of grass, known as the grass stage. During this time, the seedling puts all its energy into growing deep roots, 
building a foundation that will sustain it for centuries. It is a tree designed for the long game. These forests can persist for centuries, with individual trees becoming ancient giants that define the landscape for generations. But the lumber industry did not have time for that. They wanted profit now, not in decades, now. So after clear-cutting the longleaf, what did they do? They replaced it with low bee lolly pine. Loblolly grows much faster, ready for harvest in a fraction of the time it takes longleaf to mature. You can plant it in perfect rows like corn crops and treat it like a farm. And that is exactly what they did. If you drive through East Texas today, you will see these plantations. Rows and rows of identical trees, same height, same spacing, like a green warehouse. But there is one small problem. Loblolly pine does not create an ecosystem. It creates a tree farm. Walk into a loblolly plantation and you will notice something immediately. It is quiet, almost eerily quiet. No birds singing, no rustling of small animals, no wildflowers blooming in the understory. Loblolly plantations have almost zero biodiversity. The trees are planted so densely that sunlight cannot reach the forest floor. Nothing grows underneath. No diverse herbaceous understory, no 900 plant species, no 273 bird species, just trees, in rows, like a green parking lot. We replaced an ecosystem with a lumber factory. And here is the thing, nobody stopped it. Nobody said, wait, maybe we should leave some of this. By the 1990s, longleaf forests had been reduced to just 2.8 million acres out of 90 million. It was one of the fastest, most complete destructions of an ecosystem in American history and most people do not even know it happened. What we lost. So what did we actually lose? Let's start with the species. 29 species are now listed under the Endangered Species Act because of the loss of longleaf forests, the red cockaded woodpecker. This bird is incredibly particular. It only nests in living longleaf pines that have reached significant age, typically many decades old. Why? because it takes that long for the trees to develop the right conditions for the bird to excavate a cavity. It is an evolutionary relationship millions of years in the making. There are almost no trees that old anymore. We cut them all down. Red cockaded woodpecker populations have collapsed and they are federally endangered. The Louisiana pine snake is one of the rarest snakes in North America, with wild populations severely depleted. It lived in sandy soils under longleaf canopies, hunting pocket gophers in their burrows. When the forest disappeared, so did the pocket gophers, and so did the snake. The gopher tortoise may be the biggest loss of all, ecologically speaking. Gopher tortoises dig massive burrows in sandy soil. Some burrows extend deep underground and stretch considerable distances. Here is the incredible part. Hundreds of other species use these burrows. Snakes shelter in them during fires. Frogs hide from predators. Insects, small mammals, even other reptiles shelter there. The gopher tortoise burrow is like an apartment complex for the forest floor. Biologists call them a keystone species. Remove them and the entire ecosystem structure collapses. Gopher tortoises are now threatened across most of their range. Other species include the eastern indigo snake, the bobwhite quail, whose populations have declined dramatically across their range, the flatwood salamander, and Bachman's Sparrow. And that flower I mentioned earlier, the Texas Trailing Phlox. It exists only in the longleaf forests of Texas, nowhere else in the world. This plant evolved in these specific conditions, sandy soil, filtered sunlight through a longleaf canopy, and the specific nutrient composition of longleaf needle litter. Remove those conditions and the plant cannot survive. What happens when you destroy 97% of its habitat? But it's not just these individual species, it's the entire web of life. Those 900 plant species, each one supports dozens of insect species. Those insects support birds, reptiles, amphibians. Those animals disperse seeds, pollinate flowers, and aerate soil. It's a system. Remove one piece and others start falling. Remove 97% of the system and the whole thing collapses. The World Wildlife Fund considers the Piney Woods one of the critically endangered ecosystems in the United States. Think about that term, critically endangered. 
That is the same category as mountain gorillas, Sumatran rhinos, species on the absolute brink of extinction. Our own backyard ecosystem is in that category. 86% of the vegetation in this ecoregion is highly altered or converted. 96% of the savannas and forests are lost. Only 3% of the original ecosystem is protected. For context, many of the world's most celebrated ecosystems have significantly higher protection levels. The Amazon, the Serengeti, the Great Barrier Reef, these places get global attention and protection. Here is what really gets me. Most of that 3% is not even in Texas. The vast majority of remaining longleaf forests are in Florida, Georgia, and the Carolinas. Texas, where these forests once covered millions of acres, Texas now has 45,000 acres. That is about 70 square miles. You could drive across the entirety of Texas's remaining longleaf forests in an hour, and almost nobody knows about it. In 2022, the government launched the Texas Piney Woods Restoration Initiative. It is part of EQIPCIC, the Environmental Quality Incentives Program. The program pays landowners to plant longleaf pines, to conduct prescribed burns, and to remove invasive species. The problem is rebuilding a 90 million acre ecosystem with programs that have restored 870,000 acres in total across nine states since 2010. That is 1%. Historically, we went from 90 million acres down to 2.8 million acres by the 1990s and to about 5 million acres today. We are still down 85 million acres. Restoration is incredibly difficult. During the grass stage, longleaf seedlings are especially vulnerable. Other plants can shade them out and kill them. Historically, fire kept these forests clear. Natural fires occurred every two to three years, low intensity, killing competing vegetation, but not longleaf. Longleaf evolved with fire. Its growing tip is protected at ground level, so when fire sweeps over, seedlings survive. Hardwoods have growing tips above ground, and fire kills them. Fire maintained these forests, killing competition, opening the canopy, returning nutrients, and stimulating flowering. The longleaf ecosystem needed fire, like prairies need grazing. Fire was essential. But we spent a century suppressing fire. Smokey the Bear taught us that only you can prevent forest fires. We stopped all burning. Now we use prescribed burns, controlled and carefully planned, funded by government programs and carried out on private lands to simulate what used to happen naturally before we interfered. The irony is brutal. We spent a century saying fire is bad, and now we are spending millions intentionally burning forests because fire is essential. We are recreating what nature did for free for millions of years, and it is slow. Seedlings planted today will not be mature forests until the next century. Our grandchildren might see them mature, but we will not. Organizations working hard include the Longleaf Alliance, the Nature Conservancy, and the U.S. Forest Service. Places like Roy E. Larson Sanctuary, 5,600 acres near Silsby, are doing incredible work removing invasive species, planting seedlings, and conducting burns. But 5,600 acres out of millions lost is a drop in the ocean. We are restoring less than 1% of what we destroyed. It is like trying to rebuild a rainforest with garden tools. Why it matters? Why care about a forest that's already 97% gone? Because what we lost wasn't just trees, ecosystem services, things nature provided free that we now pay for, water filtration. Those deep roots and a diverse understory filtered rainwater naturally, supplying clean water to aquifers, streams, and rivers. Now, billions are spent on water treatment. Erosion prevention. Root systems held soil during hurricanes and floods now we see increased sedimentation and more severe flooding. Carbon storage. Old growth forests stored substantial carbon in trees and in the soil. We release much of that carbon when we cut them down. Pollinator habitat. 500 butterfly species and countless bees and other insects. These pollinators are essential for agriculture, for wild plant reproduction, and for overall ecosystem health. 
we are in a pollinator crisis. We destroyed one of the most pollinator-rich ecosystems in North America. Economic value is difficult to quantify precisely, but based on what we know, it is likely billions annually across the original range. We counted timber value, and we did not count water filtration, carbon storage, or biodiversity. We are in a biodiversity crisis. We are losing species at rates far exceeding natural levels. This is the sixth mass extinction. The main driver is habitat loss. You cannot protect species without habitats. Red cockaded woodpeckers do not care about protection laws if there are no old forests. Real conservation means protecting entire, functioning ecosystems. We have 3% left. Texas had a remarkable forest. It was one of the most biodiverse ecosystems in North America, with 900 plants, 273 birds, and 500 butterflies. Its biodiversity rivaled tropical forests. It covered 90 million acres, from the Atlantic nearly to the Mississippi. We cut it down, 750 million board feet per year in Texas alone, for decades. We replaced it with plantations, rows of identical trees where diverse forests once stood. 97% was destroyed in less than a century. People alive today remember these forests. 29 species are now endangered. We are spending millions planting back 3%. Since 2010, 870,000 acres have been restored out of 85 million lost. That is 1%. Seedlings planted today will not mature until the next century. Most of us will not see them. And even if every program succeeds, we will only have a fraction of what we lost. 5 million acres cannot support what 90 million once did. You cannot replace a continent-spanning ecosystem with scattered fragments. When you think of threatened ecosystems, you think Amazon, coral reefs, Arctic tundra. Nobody thinks Texas. But right here, we had something extraordinary. Forests with biodiversity. Rivaling tropical ecosystems. And it is gone. 97% gone. One of the most biodiverse ecosystems you have never heard of. We destroyed it before most people knew it existed. Before we understood what we had. Before we realized some things, once lost, can never be recovered. And that is the story nobody tells.